because of the interest in our video, gyroscope appearing to violate Newton's third law, I've done some other experimentation I think you'll be interested in. Um, one of them is, I built this apparatus here. This is a linear actuator purchased off Amazon. This is a wireless controller here. And this is a just a 12 volt lithium ion battery. It's actually from a uh, cheap, inexpensive Black & Decker drill. It's 12 volts. And I've got this wireless controller program to this uh, little keypad here. And I've got it set up so we can just go up and down with that. And what we're going to do is measure the difference in force. I'm primarily interested in the start force of when the actuator first goes up. That should be the maximum resistance to movement. We'll do it with the gyroscope pinned straight up in this vertical position with this little brass rod here. Then we'll take that out and we'll get a uh, precessing and repeat it. And we'll do this several times for each case and see if we see a difference. Not sure what we're going to get, but we'll find out. Now, just for point of reference, um, the scale, when you tear it, like it is now, the display goes dark. So during some of the experiments, what I'll have to do is add some weight, like the paper cups, about one and a half grams, just to keep the display lit up so we can see it. The other thing is, you know, if you push down, the display goes positive. When it goes negative, you see a negative sign there. For these, you're not going to see much of the negative sign. When I first uh, developed this apparatus, I uh, tried to do it on a rubber ball balance. Gyroscope would have to be probably three times as massive for it. Uh, just for a point of reference, just so you can see how much mass we're dealing with. Uh, I've got the balance teared. I'm going to tear it again. See it's reading zero. We, this is similar to what we have on there. The only difference is this little, little fitting I have on the end here. 155.0 grams. Um, this apparatus right here with the battery controller and everything, 1,836 grams roughly, 1,835.9. So that's what we're dealing with. So it'd be nice if we had a more massive gyroscope so the relative difference would be greater, but uh, this is what we have to work with right now. So we're gonna try this. We'll run this up and down a few times with about precessing document the numbers and then we'll repeat it with a precessing and see what we get. I've summarized all the data. It's at the end of the video. I've got uh, edited video segments of all the different experiments in here as well. And you're welcome to look at all of them or you can just go right back to the summary. And uh, it was an interesting experiment uh, to try and do this and see if this linear actuator could see a difference in resistance to force going up, which basically would be in compliance with Newton's third law if there's no difference with it, precessing with without precessing. I'll, uh, the summary is at the back. Uh, please take a look at it. And um, if you get a chance, uh, if you like this, like, like us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel and look at our other videos as well. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start out with the gyroscope pinned more or less vertical position. We're going to tear it, add this little paper clip. It's about roughly one and a half grams um, to keep the display lit. When it tears, it goes to zero and it goes dark, so we're going to keep the display lit. Uh, and remember, if when it goes negative, like you see a negative sign over there, we shouldn't see much of that with these experiments. First thing we're going to do is run this down and we're primarily interested in resistance to movement as it first starts to go up so we're going to do that several times and we'll do it with the gyroscope precessing 3.8 just recording the maximum number that i see when it starts 5.0 4.7, 3.6, now we'll start at precessing and see what we get. Okay, that looks more normal. 
3.8, of course it's not precessing now. Still spinning, but not precessing. 4.4. 4 4.6. 3.3. Because the uh, start weight varied so much when the gyroscope was precessing, uh, a lot of numbers instead to stay in steady say 1.4 1.5 we've got the this teared with the paper clip on there which is uh, to make the uh, display stay say lit up um, what I'm going to do is just spin this uh, get it precessing and put it in slow motion and try to get an idea and document the numbers I get without the actuator running up and down just simply sitting here precessing and to get an idea of what that variability is and uh, see how that figures into our data. Because of the uh, spurious digital scale readings with the gyroscopes oscillating on this linear actuator assembly, what I'm going to do is just take a gyroscope by itself and spin it up here on the scale. And we'll see what that looks like on the scale reading. Okay, the scale is reading, it's teared. Teared out at zero. We'll put the gyroscope on there. We're reading 155.1 grams. Now we'll get it spinning. Okay, it's spinning. I'm going to try to center it right in the middle of the digital balance here. Oh, that's going to go off. Let's try it over here. Remember, we were at 155.1. That's interesting. The whole thing starts spinning, not just the rotor. It's staying close to 155.0, 155. All right, we'll stop it. Okay, we well, were just spinning but not precessing. 155.1, what we started with. So it's obviously a little more stable like this, indicating a lot of my problems with this linear actuator probably just in the uh, looseness of it and the tendency to move around. Okay, there's nothing like boring your YouTube fans with a bunch of data, but I just wanted to, as quick as I can, go through what I found. Uh, this course is our gyroscope on the digital scale. All these measurements are in grams to a tenth of a gram. And this is the gyroscope accelerating up when it wasn't precessing on the linear actuator, accelerating up when it was precessing. This was the gyroscope reversing down. I originally wasn't going to look at these numbers. They're negative. Um, but I was able to get some data, so I thought I'd take a look at it. This is our start weight, 1.5 grams here. It's max weight I noted in the videos. This is the difference. Calculated the average and standard deviation, and then 23 samples here. Um, for the accelerating up, precessing, same thing, average, standard deviation, and uh, count. Look, uh, one more here. The average here on the, with it not precessing, running up uh, 2.6, with it precessing 3.0. Say this is bigger, but the standard deviation, there's enough variability here, you can't reliably say there's a real difference there. This was the reversing down with a not precessing, with a precessing. Got a minus 5 here and a minus 6 here. Standard deviation 1.2 and 1.3. Again, there's, there's not enough difference 
with the variability to reliably say anything about that. This was not quite as much data here, uh, but this was with the gyroscope spinning, but not precessing, just hanging there spinning. Uh, start weight, the artifact of the digital scale, it was indicating 1.3 instead of 1.5. So um, in any event, this was the up max weight. This was the average of uh, 3.6. And this was, uh, um, of course, that's positive number since it was running up. This was the max down weight, uh, which is negative because it reversed direction and uh, on the way down. Um, got an average of minus 6.3 here. You know, there's enough variability. I'm not going to reliably say much of anything about this. Uh, when the gyroscope was just precessing but not going up or down on the linear actuator, I thought, how can I get a reliable number? The numbers were bouncing around. But I looked at 52 uh, images off the uh, slow motion, and uh, the average is 1.5. I guess you look at enough data, it comes out in the average. That's right where it should have been. So that's all I'm going to say about this. Um, I think, uh, you know, there's no point in ever trying to make data uh, fit your theory. I didn't really have a theory in this. I thought, I'd, well, let's see what happens. I can't say that there's a difference uh, between uh, the the start force and the, uh, with the, accel the uh, linear accelerator moving up or down, really, uh, with the gyroscope precessing or not precessing. Maybe this will be useful to somebody else looking at something like this. Thank you. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like us and sign up as a subscriber to our channel, Anisotropic Plus. We also have a website at anisotropicplus.com. We have a lot of other videos. If you would take some time to look at some of them, we'd appreciate it. Thank you.